Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, <clears throat> and worship unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Machakudash. Double honors unto the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And salutations to you, Akim, upon the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and sincerity. This is the book of Second Ezra, the second chapter, in the 26th verse. And it reads, As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish. For I will require them from among thy number. And this time is speaking of Jacob's trouble. Tribulation, a period of tribulation. But although certain martyrs shall be beheaded for Yahweh Shai, but because of what they stood for and the principles in which they maintained, it they essentially overcame death. So yeah, they were you know, their head might have been chopped off, but they still got the victory because what they did was perfect. What they did was integral. And so they could never die. The elect can never die. Let's get the book of St. John. And yeah, I know Yahweh Shah did go on the cross and he was crucified, but he could never die. Likewise, his men. So this is the book of St. John, the 17th chapter, and the 12th verse. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. And I want you to reflect and consider the term kept. And we will go to Revelations, the third chapter and 10th verse, but reflect upon the term kept. And of course, on the portion where it says in thy name, that's important to consider. And the name is Yahweh. It says in continuation, it says, whose that thou gavest me, I have kept. And who is it that was given to Yahweh Shai? The elect. You know, the disciples. They turned the apostles and ultimately the whole body of Yahweh Shai, who was the elect. The church. It says, and none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, which that is Judas Scarlet. It says that the scripture might be fulfilled. The 27 verse of Second Ezra is the second chapter. It says, be not weary. Meaning don't be scared. Don't be fearful. You know, don't be weak. Don't be don't have faint hands. Don't be weak hearted. There's the times that we're coming into is gonna push us to our limit. You know, it's going to um it's gonna be a humbling period for the earth.
and for all flesh. And it reads, it says, <clears throat> it says, Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. But thou should be merry and have abundance. All right. And so when you go to the book of Isaiah, the scripture says, My, and now we see in verse 26, it says, As for the servants, all right. But when you go to the book of Isaiah, I believe that's the 58th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, 58th or 59th chapter. It says, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Right. So there's going to be a famine. A lack of bread in the land. And the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Shah, is going to feed us. But the others who mock, the others who didn't consider were not obedient to the, the the warning, the labors of the prophets. They're going to be hungry. They're not going to have food to eat. And it's going to be like that every day until they wither and rot away. This is the consequence for not being the elect. says others shall weep and be sorrowful but thou shall be merry and have abundance now in fact I want to get that because that's a perfect it's really a perfect scripture for the second Ezra's in that verse um, so let me just go ahead and grab it real quick this is really just an excellent scripture an excellent precept I don't want it to, um, you know, I want it to be acknowledged and, and, and analyzed and considered. This is Isaiah the 50, where we at? No, it's the, it's the um, 59th chapter, I believe, around verse, what? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too. Let me see. Let me see. I'm looking for, um, part of me. Was... It's, it's in the book of Isaiah. Yet the 65th chapter. I was, I looked up the, when the enemy should come in as a flood. That was part of me. Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. It says, And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. Right, and that's those who are not their elect. They're going to be, um, it's going to be weeping and gnashing the teeth. It says, For the Lord Yahweh shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. All right. So he's going to slay the wicked and he's going to exalt his servants, which are the elect. All right. So let's go to, all right, let's go to the book of Revelations, We're reflecting and precepting Second Ezra, the second chapter in the 27th verse again. It says, be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaven is coming, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. So let's go to the book, we'll go in the book of Malachi, pardon me. Um, let's do Revelations, the third chapter. All right, this is Revelations chapter three. All right.
verse 10. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 10. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Remember when we read earlier the term kept. But the scripture says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now, keeping the word of the Lord's patience is doing the work, being a, a good servant, fit for the master's use, not doing your will, but committing yourself unto his will. Being spiritual, being brotherly, being kind, loving, having love in your heart. You know, these are characteristics of of the servants of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. The servants of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai will exemplify these type of characteristics. And it's the inner man, not the outer. You must look at the inward and not the outer. That's important. As the scripture said, the Lord tried the reins of the heart. All right. It's, um, it says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, which the term patience goes into suffering. All right. I actually want to get that in the Greek. What is the term patience? In the Greek... Uh, Pardon me, I just passed it. Which, yep, it's hypomone, which means steadfastness, constancy, endurance. All right, it says in the New Testament, the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. See? It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee. And that trial is what? The hour of temptation. It says, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now, when you go into the term hour of temptation, you get a Greek term, ora ton pirmosos. All right. Which ora meaning hour or moment, ton meaning of. And piramasas, meaning temptation, a trial, or test. But in actuality, it also can mean piercing. And then when you go into the root word of um, piramasas, you'll get the Greek word peran, which means to try by piercing. So when you translate oraton piramasas, is hour of trial or test, or it will be hour of, or the moment of piercing. And what is that talking about? Is that talking about sin? Is that talking about embargoes? Is that talking about Christianity? Is that talking about a white woman or whatever else these guys say? No, it's talking about the mandatory implementation of the R, and of course you know the F-I-D, C-H-I-P, C -H -I -P. you know, and it says, now if you do the Lord's will, he's going to preserve you from that, but if you're not doing your Habashim Yashah's will, you're not going to be preserved from the peril, all right, it's going to overcome you, and you're going to die, and you're going to take the device, You know, and so you have to, we have to be zoned in, tuned into the spirit to, uh, you know, have that access to be of the initiated, you know, and this is not something that can be granted to you by man and by your own labors, but honestly, truly by God, you know. The Heavenly Father provides in the time of trouble, and that is the greatest time of trouble ever, and He will not forsake us. We do believe this. 
And Lord willing, we overcome this world. So then I'm going to give our praises, honor, glory, and worship unto Yahweh Shemiah Shai. Shalom.